and share again. All right, um, so let's get started. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Hubert Chin, uh, the product director of Marimba. Marimba is a brand new collaboration tool that my team built recently. It has been about two months since it was released to the public as a beta service. Um, again, like thank you so much for taking time with me at your precious lunch time. Well, um, before I get started, I would like to say to Mete, um, again, I mean, thank you so much for giving me this great opportunity to speak in front of these great people. I and Mete met in Korea once and became friends before the pandemic. And I guess that is the one of the reasons I was invited. Um, today, uh, for the next 15 minutes, I would like to share my story. The story that I experienced for the past one year. It was short, but a quite amazing journey. During that uh, period of time, everything happened so fast in my life. I learned a lot from it. I hope you can feel the same way because I will share things as much as possible from that experience. So I will share, I will try to do my best uh, to squeeze you know, one year to um, 15 minutes. Just one thing uh, I'd like to tell you first is today, I'm not going to tell you about my success story, like everything went well perfectly, stuff like that. Instead, I will share what I failed and what I tried differently from the previous failure under an extremely unique circumstance as an agile journey. Does it sound okay to you? All right. Indeed it does. And it sounds very brave and courageous. So thank you for that. Um, your sound was a bit broke, breaking. Can you say that again, Meite? It sounds really good. And it sounds like you have a lot of courage. Yeah. So thank you for taking the courage and share your failures as well. Thank you. So uh, let me go on. So, well, um, if I tell you what you can expect from this talk is follow these three things. One, I think you will see how innovation can happen in an, even in an enterprise company. Two, with the uh, agile product li development life cycle, how we can actually come up with the product idea and validate it and how we can grow from there with iteration to find the product market fit. Three, you will see how we form uh, our self-organized and cross-functional product team and ramp up in a real world. Well, um, before we get into our story, uh, just a second, let me volume down a little bit. Um, so let, uh, let it play. Well, before we get into our story, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Probably Fatima already watched this video once um, because uh, this video will make you understand better about my presentation. Before I started to work with this product career, my life was full of agile. I fell in love with agile someday in 2007 when I was a junior developer. If I remember right, uh, that momentum came to me when I participated in a conference called XP 2007 held in Como in Italy. I met really great people. Um, for instance, Kent Beck, Mary Popendik, Ahmed Sidki, Jeff Patton, and so on. Those people were passionately talking about how to work better in every session I participated and became good friends with one another. It was a fascinating experience. After I got back to my office, I started to apply agile stuff to everywhere in my life, no matter what role I took in a project. I tried to improve the situations around me with agile and experienced success and failure. And I spent almost 10 years doing so. I was heavily into agile. And then in 2015, I was very lucky enough to have a chance to create a team called Agile Core Team. Uh, the video you're watching now is about the team. I had uh, 80 great developers, 20 wonderful designers, and 10 great product majors and 10 wonderful agile coaches in the team. We provided services as a loan by doing approach. Loan by doing was a service we provided to other teams, internally and externally from Samsung. Um, agile core team helped other team 
is to be transformed by building a product together. We used pair programming, pair designing, and pair product managing. It was hard, but meaningful. Uh, people whom we worked with uh, seemed like they were understanding Agile right. We did more than 30 projects there. We tried really hard and felt we were actually changing Samsung, working better. We celebrated a lot of successes together as a team. But in summer of 2019, something unexpected came. One day, CSO, Chief Strategy Officer, one of the most influential executives in my company, asked me to have lunch together and told me this. Hubert, um, I think you did a great job about Agile Transformation Movement, but there's one job I would like to ask you to do from now. The job is about, it's, it's a, bit, a little bit different from what you were doing before. Um, I said, okay, I'm listening. And then he carried on. Uh, we need to build a new collaboration tool to prepare for our future solution business. I want you to become the product director for it. And our CEO already named you as the right person. Okay, then let's have lunch. I do not remember what I tasted on that day exactly for the lunch. Since I was having a wonderful career experience at the time with Agile, I might have to say no to it, but still I could not say no in front of him instantly because there were two things coming into my mind at the same time. One uh, was about the feeling that I wanted to build a product and I wanted to carve my name on it. Before I had only a few chances to control a software product completely as an influential person. Instead, I always talked about like how part, how means how to build a good product. Yes, process more precisely. Um, you need to build your product in this way. You need to do that to, to be more success, successful, stuff like that. It was the most of the conversation I made. Um, I was an experienced coach instead of an owner of the product team. Somehow I wanted to have a full control about a product someday and wanted to use every agile practice for the success. Um, the other feeling I had was frustration. As far as I was concerned, collaboration was one of the most saturated markets already amongst all the software domains. Slack, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, like we are using right now, and so many great tools were in the market already. And still, we could see over like 30 brand new tools were poured out into the collaboration market every year. The collaboration tool market itself was a real red ocean. If, if I look for like two by two graph with a maturity for X axis and popularity for Y axis of those collaboration tools, it was even difficult to read titles or logos of the products because there were so many. I could see hundreds of dots on the graph instead, but things already happened. I already lost the right momentum to say no to my CEO and CSO. Our CSO told me, and he also mentioned about our CEO's comment, that was the end of the story. From that time, people around me expected to bring me the plan for them, um, what to make and how to make. Since this thing came from our CEO, that was already the firm mission I needed to complete. I had to wake up from the dizziness um, as soon as possible. I needed to do, I needed to think right uh, and straight. My instinct from 16 year experience at Samsung told me I did not have much time. I should bring at least one valuable idea to pitch to CEO within a week. Yes, um, that short amount of time I had. Well. Instead of thinking much about the product idea, what I was doing was looking for something familiar with uh, my, pre uh, my previous experience because I thought I knew how to make the product right. I was aware of all the practices related to great product development processes. I used to teach all the people around me how to build a product right. I knew every term from agile, lean startup and design thinking. So I focused on how part first because it was easier to me. First of all, I wanted to make a good team. The team should be called as a cross-functional and self-organized team, like Scrum says so. And I wanted to build a team without any lead time, 
like Lean Software Development says so, in this case, uh, the team should be capable of building a product for themselves instead of um, depending on other team's help. From the experience, I knew we need people who could take care of three different things. One, business. Two, technology. Three, uh, user experience. If I translate this to the real roles, there are product majors for the business, developers for the technology, and designers for the user experience. And I wanted to start small to make the best speed out of the combination of these roles. I should be, a, it should be a small team. Um, I asked to hire two product majors, two designers, three de developers only in total, including me, seven people. And I wanted to announce uh, four things should be supported for this team. I wanted to cut off like all the uh, stakeholders pressure out of this team. One, uh, the service direction should be decided by the team. Two, the team starts building a small but valuable to users. Three, the team builds the product by the order of a priority of the features instead of a stakeholder's preferences. Four, we need to meet two to three potential users and we need to have budget for it to validate our product every week. Then I asked uh, HL to recruit people internally and externally. Then I looked at myself and realized there's another problem. The problem was I was completely alone at the time. And it might last for another like one to two months at least. Because if you ask for new people in an enterprise, it usually takes like one to six months to bring them to your team. Even with the best scenario, this best case scenario, it might take like one to two months. I had to do something first. I had only one week. Um, after I thought about how to create a new team, I thought about the process, how I am going to work with them. As the first choice, I put the Spotify model on the table. Anyone ever heard of a Spotify model, right? You guys have heard? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, this model was su suggested by uh, Helik Knikbak. Um, he is from Sweden and uh, he's recognized as one of the most famous agile coaches um, still. Well, I heard that uh, there was some some controversial issues about the model itself. Some people said the Spotify model did not actually work well in Spotify offices. Instead, it was just a good looking process picture. But still, I believe this format can be effectively applied to um, many types of a typical product development lifecycle. It has five different stages, starting from product idea, think it, build it, ship it, and tweak it. And it makes a great sense to explain things. I just named it uh, differently because um, to me, this makes more sense and easy to explain. So I put like, I, instead of um, think it idea validation, instead of a build it MVP development and stuff like that. Um, well, um, I prepared for the team and the process, but from the time I really needed to focus on the product idea. I had, because I had only four days um, the good thing was I was very familiar with the domain, collaboration uh, domain, um, because I had many chances to explore various collaboration tools while working. I used Jira and Confluence, also used Slack and Zoom and Google Workspace as well. With that knowledge, first of all, I did a research on Google, like everybody does, right? Um, I could easily find good information about the collaboration market. I found several interesting facts. One, the market was obviously growing 9.8% uh, every year. Second, the work from home culture in the, in the US and Europe was obviously growing. For the past three years, it increased 158% because of hiring issues and work and life balance needed from employees. And third, New collaboration tools came with a sweet type instead of an attribute as a trend. Before they started to build one attribute normally, attribute like an email, video call, messenger, and wiki, stuff like that. They built that first, then they combined every attribute product to be provided as a suite. But recently we could see a product started as a suite first from the beginning, like Notion and a suite. After I got this amount of information, 
I went out of the office because I realized I had many friends in a software domain. And I knew that uh, those people must be the users for my work in the future. So I met several guys online and offline. For instance, I met an agile coach from Twitter. And then I met the CEO of Suite, the great collaboration tool, and a project manager of UZ. Uh, they, were, they were all uh, working in a US companies located in San Francisco or Seoul. They had um, sophisticated experiences about collaboration tools. Uh, when I talked with them, they were willingly telling me about the problem of current collaboration tools while they were working with those tools. Additionally, they told me a lot of things about market situation. I gathered so much data out of these conversations. And then I met some guys in Korea too. A guy who was working as an innovation director at Samsung Electronics recommended me to um, watch something valuable. He said, I must, watch, I, I, I must watch startup school videos, which were provided by Y Combinator for free. He said, I will learn a lot, a lot of things from it. So I watched a couple of videos at night and found one really uh, valuable lesson. That was how Y Combinator as a venture capital company invested in a startup. They had a very clear rules. They focused on only two things. One, user's problem. And two, is a solution to it, solution for it. If you are interested in it as well, please watch Kevin Hale's video on Y Combinator channels. Uh, the contents are really great there. Um, from this training program, I could learn how to focus on user's problem and a solution. If you can define these two well, your startup will be valuable so that you'll be invested. Defining the right problem was the most important thing because it is a starting point. Finding a good problem was like a key to start. Kevin Hale in that video mentioned um, good uh, problem examples. Ideally speaking, if more than 1 million people have the same problem, it is a good problem. If the problem is getting bigger 20% every year, it is a good problem. That means uh, the, the size of the market is really big. If the current problem solving is expensive or if the current problem should be solved, but there's no solution, it is a good problem. Something like that. Well, probably everyone who is partic participating in this webinar right now already knew in, from your experiences, most of the things I mentioned. Um, yeah, um, that is what we used to call as a pain point. Just these days startups, uh, VCs are calling it as a user's problem. So I tried to find the right problem. While talking with the several people in the market, I could hear something like this. People were not satisfied with the current tools. For instance, if you look at this article picture from Vox.com, a lot of people were having a hard time using Slack, which was known as the best tool in the collaboration market. The fact was, Slack was built to maximize intercommunication amongst team members, but it did not think much about usage for communication with external team members at the beginning. So if you become a manager who needs to deal with more than two different teams, you have to face complicated communication channels when you use it. More precisely, you need to face more than 100 notifications every day because notification comes with every message on your channels in Slack. It is a very annoying problem for users. Slack wanted to expand the usage for the enterprise company but it did not go well at the time by this issue. And company Slack was having hard time to grow during the fourth quarter in 2019. Slack was not solving users problems right, especially in an enterprise market. Now we have the pandemic. So Slack gained much popularity and revenue gain from the first quarter in 2020. But one year ago, that was a quite different story there. And if we talk a little bit about Microsoft Teams, um, try to type Microsoft Teams and UX on Google and search for it. There were hundreds of uh, comments about bad user experiences they provided. 
I was really surprised with these facts because these two tools were known as the best tools in the market, but still had many complaints. And another interesting fact I found was for most of the users, it was natural to use more than seven different tools in one team, even if you had only a few team members. Maybe if I ask you all, like how many tools you are currently using in your team now, probably I will get the same. Right now, what I'm using is like nine, nine tools, nine different tools. The thing is, tools were designed for specific needs and they wanted to, uh, they were built extremely well for those needs. And they all want to become the platforms. So they do not provide good experiences for integration with other tools. This led people to use many different tools. They had to use all the different tools together. And everyone was in this situation with no hard feeling as a natural way of work. So they just accepted it as a thing they needed to deal with anyway. But what was really happening was a bit crazy. They had to switch different apps all the time. We found people changed their app windows 373 times a day on average. They resulted, uh, this, uh, that resulted as a 23 minute waste from, uh, for, for everyone in our team and 40% pro productivity loss. Well, actually um, I got these numbers from, uh, not, not from myself, but from Satya Nadella, who is the CEO of Microsoft while explaining Microsoft Teams. Uh, he mentioned during his uh, Microsoft Ignite 2019 keynote speech. With this data I gathered, I organized my thoughts like this following. One, uh, even the best collaboration tools in the market are not satisfying enough to the users. Two, people use more than seven tools and it is normal. Three, there are new problems happening. Uh, even if like there are great to collaboration tools out there, uh, actually those great tools happen to waste more time for users, four, the collaboration market is still, still growing steeply. Uh, that is why we see 30 new collaboration tools every year. If this market is not worth jumping in, uh, they're not going to do it, right? So I started to feel like I must do this job. As long as I can make some differences, I have a chances. I put the user's problem as these numbers first. 373 times app switching, 23 minutes waste and 40% uh, of productivity loss by so many tools coexistence. And then I had to create the right solution for the problem. At the time, I was very interested in several whiteboard tools. In particular, I really enjoyed using a tool called Miro which was built in Russia originally with the name of real time board and then moved to San Francisco. Uh, and now uh, uh, it is US company and then they are doing this uh, extremely well. Um, and, um, and then I started to think like this, what if we have a whiteboard as a basement and on the top of it, we put video call, task management and many integrations. This will erase the problem dealing with the app switchings because all the apps will be on the board. A task management function will lead people to use this tool all the time. And people did not need to use video call separately. I did a report and I succeeded to get, uh, get a sponsorship. I prepared for the, the office and borrowed some laptops to start working. Um, during the time, thankfully, a few people successfully came to my team first. Uh, one product manager, one designer, and one de a developer. We four set up a workshop called Agile Inception. It was an eight-hour full-day workshop, but to spend time, uh, but but we wanted to spend time more valuably. So we asked uh, the other four members who were supposed to join later to come to uh, come to workshop as well, um, even if like they were still working in a different team. I used my boss sponsorship to make it happen and luckily it actually worked. 
only for that day, we eight people together as a team could think about what we should do together. Um, I explained to the members what I had done until that time. And we thought about what was the most valuable scenario as a revised solution. After we did the workshop, four people went back to the team and four remained. Then now we went to the next stage, which was the idea validation. It took about three months until um, November, 2019. We did not set up the time as three months, but became like that after we had the validated data. On the next day, uh, we started to working together right away. Team members quickly scheduled interviews because we wanted to prove the assumption that I created by myself before. Yes, uh, the assumption about the problem and the solution. We chose the target user, which was a remote product manager in a startup that had below 15 employees because we thought we could not target enterprise companies at the beginning. We wanted to make the problem and solution as simple as possible. We moved fast. It took two days to, uh, two days to um, schedule to meet those product majors. And then we met nine product majors from small sized company. Each interview took about one hour, but preparing and analyzing took much longer. After two weeks, we got the result like this. One, uh, it was true that everyone had to deal with uh, many different tools. That naturally led to the waste of time. Two, the trend of remote working was steeply increasing. Some people um, who are working in the uh, US uh, even told us there was no case when everyone in the team came to the office offline altogether anymore. Some people took off on Monday, some people um, took, on, uh, took off on Tuesday and Wednesday. This, uh, this kind of a trend happened. This means um, if they wanted to have a meeting with all the members in the team, they had to work with a, on, on audio or video call service. Three, um, they did use a video call, but did not like it. A video call service was always one directional communication like we are doing right now. One guy explains and the others listen. It was not like everyday communication offline and people felt asking questions was not polite because they had to cut other, others' words all the time. And due to the delay of the sound, they had to face awkward moments often. Four, uh, there were many companies working as a full-time remote these days. Uh, in that environment, people were having a new problem that people did not deal with before. Uh, from one report written by Google Research said, people were suffering from social isolation problems because they did not, uh, they could not talk over drinking coffee together and to build a relationship with colleagues. Well, um, at the time, social isolation sounded really great as a problem because we never heard of it. Um, we never heard of any tool to solve their problem. If I come back to the present, I am pretty sure uh, I will not choose it as a problem to focus, but at the time it really sounded really cool. So our team was motivated to, motivated to solve that problem, social isolation with the tool and came up with this solution. So we've put uh, infinite, infinite whiteboard as the basement and we tried to do a virtual standup on the whiteboard. Oh, just a sec, sorry, the video did not move. So I will try one more time, okay. Um, and we wanted to have a emotional expressions with a dynamic emoji. Um, wouldn't this be a good solution to solve the social isolation problem for remote workers? Um, and eventually that would help product managers to work better with the team members. Yeah, that was, um, that was a thought at the time. Then we came up with this scenario. This was the design prototype scenario like you can see uh, down there um, to solve that problem. We used Figma and Framer to build this scenario. And then we were very happy 
uh, because at least we came up with something that uh, we had not seen yet in the market. And then we brought these two potential users to validate our idea. We met another 11 product majors from startups who were doing remote work. And at the same time, a developer came up with a prototype called a prototype using WebRTC. Like you can see um, um, the uh, left, left downside and able to send message and draw, drawing, uh, and, and drawing to each other. After, uh, after we gained the result, we were shocked because the validation result was horrible. Only four people out of 11 said they liked this idea this might, and, and this might solve their problem. You see, if you do um, user validation, you need to see the number with your cold heart. You are in this situation. Let's say uh, there are people you meet for the first time in your life. Would they be easy to be negative of what you ask? Not really. So for instance, if you get only 36% as a positive feedback, this actually means close to zero. In this sense, I had to admit I failed. Um, when we heard was also really harsh. One, 15 employee startups do not have time to think about employees' social isolation problem because they need to run to the business goal all the time only. Small success is the only thing they actually care about. Two, most uh, 15 employee startups prefer to use free of charge tools instead of what they need to pay for because their financial, financial situation is not that great. Three, um, social isolation only happens in a small amount of groups only in a full-time uh, full remote company. Since full-time remote companies are less than 5% uh, of the entire soft industry at the time, if you are targeting that small uh, amount of group, then it is valid, but financially, financial success must be a far away. Four, to solve the social isolation, you need to do something offline with your team members. Instead, um, collaboration tools do not solve the problem. One product manager even said this was the, like one of the stupidest idea he, he had ever heard of. Like you saw, um, yes, we made every mistake we could possibly make. Target user was wrong. The problem was wrong and the solution was wrong too. And then we were frustrated, but it was good because the result showed we obviously needed to pivot. A few days later, we came up with the improved idea. It is a collaboration that happens synchronously and asynchronously. Two people join the board together and uh, leave information one by one, and they discuss together to make the decision. With this scenario, uh, we changed the target users. We targeted to tar uh, we target uh, we started to target product manager who was doing part time remote work at least one day of the week, and the organization we targeted was not fifteen employees but under six six hundred employees organizations, because in this kind of organization the product major actually takes a role to decide what tool they want to use. So if you look at the video, a remote product major works with a designer in a different time zone. One person prepares for the content and talks together with the other to transfer the sufficient amount of context. And they work together to come up with the artifact to share with the, the other team members. And they go back and forth uh, with this flow to update the document on this infinite whiteboard with using video call. And we validated with 19 product majors this time, and we got much better result. We got 63% positive this time. Yeah, much improved. And then we did several more rounds in three months. It was hard, but worth doing it. We wanted to make sure one thing. Um, after this stage, building should be the right thing 
with our idea because um, it was validated enough by potential users. After three months, we uh, came up with some ideas. We were okay to build something. The problem we focused was on async, um, um, on asynchronous uh, uh, communication in a remote environment. And the solution we suggested was the workspace, which you can use content from your handy tools um, in bring your own, own software era. And we made this now, video. Now, imagine you were a product um, manager at Coupon and your boss just told you that Amazon outperforms Coupon in conversion. And we made this video. This video was edited by our team problem, member. You need to do some uh, there are two parts. First part uh, is we talk about the problem. And the second part is the solution. If you are a product you know, you manager, stuff, uh, probably you, you might work like this. Part. When you do the research, you search so for the information and gather information. You yeah, get the so graphs, YouTube, articles, like YouTube's video, videos, you list, and future, right? after you get the in, enough Once amount of done, information, you, you analyze it and you write a document. So you go back and, and then all the places where you might discuss data, online a little bit and then you share with the team members. Uh, please take a look. Uh, I will. So Pulling up the dots, yes, so know, that you guys can watch and start typing the dots. Then you share your findings with the team. You write the document and then share with and them to check team members. And soon you receive some comments from team members. But Google Docs commenting function doesn't seem to be enough, so you decide to do a Zoom call. You go to your desktop, find Zoom, set up a new call, share the link, and start waiting. Oh, here comes a designer. Once he joins, you share your desktop to facilitate the discussion. You point him to some of your findings earlier. A screenshot in local drive, the article in Chrome, until your designer also wants to share his screen, which means you have to stop sharing. Designer draws the checkout process for you and let you know the key difference. Three steps versus six. Okay, we get it. After that, you take back the screen sharing and summarize all the discussion. You two are finally on the same page. How productive. But wait, is it really though? So Before that was the problem mind, we um, had at the time. The and same problem. We suggested the solution board, something like this. In this case, let me check out process optimization. In this first path, lay out the objectives of the project so that team can always remember the goal they're working towards. When you start your research, simply create a new path. Now you can gather all the important information in one place with URL text, picture, YouTube, Google Tools, and so much more. To compare the checkout process with Amazon, you can draw out your process and Amazon process side by side. When synthesizing your insight, you have all your information at your fingertips, no more juggling with 20 different apps. And when you're done with your insight, you can mention your team members right on the canvas. What if you need to discuss over video conference? No issue at all. With just one click, everyone comes to the same board and the concept of desktop sharing is so out of date. On this board, you and your team can view the slides together, understand your thought process and get the job done. Thanks to the integration with many other popular tools, the most up-to-date design concept is right next to what you wanted to design. If you have any comments, no problem. Just circle it out and ask, all in real time. When design is done and development starts, you have Jira showing the status of all tickets. And guess what? You can move your cards right there within the same board. Like we promised, no more back and forth. With our tool, regardless of what tool you use, you gather all your information in one place where real discussion. So that was the video we created as the idea. Um, did you, um, could you like hear the sound well? Like, was it okay to yes. hear? Yes. Okay. How do you think? <laughs> that was like a imagination because that wasn't a real code. Instead, that was design prototype. And... Can I ask you a question, Hubert? Yeah, please. So how did you break this up into features and prioritize it with your team? Was, was that a, a problem or... or... How did you go about doing that? 
Well, well, honestly speaking, actually, it will um, bring me to the MVP development uh, phase. Uh, and then what we did actually was we didn't focus on any quality of the code. And we didn't focus on any quality of um, so even if like it's a, it's, I mean, the the performance is so bad. We just created because to show the like one one scenario that will make sense. So I mean, with one scenario, which is going to I'm going to show you the one, one video. Um, this is the scenario that we created. I will let me just um, lower the volume first. And like you can, you can see, uh, we didn't have login. Uh, we just used like a React JS technology and a Node JS backend, and we just um, made something that was only working for that scenario. And I mean, on, up until a development, at the actual development stage, we didn't focus on any like prioritize much. Just focused on like one scenario. Um, we had um, only three developers at that time, and those guys did an amazing job, like you can see. And like, this kind of integration, well, these days it's really easy because all the um, great collaboration tools provide open API. It's not that difficult to um, implement this much. Um, yeah, that's that's my answer. Does it make sense, Mitek? Yeah, thank you. All right. So um, if I go back a little bit, um, uh, we, had, well, after making this video clip, we had to go for the another round of um, report to CEO. Or well, we went and and then then we went to the next stage, which was the MVP building stage. Um, we started to build MVP. While we were doing it, we validated with uh, more product majors in the world. We met over 110 interviewees from 70 different companies and validated uh, the scenario. At this moment, finally, we had the rest of our entire team members. Yes, uh, eight people as the perfect team. The number of uh, number was small, but they were trained enough to be agile because I brought them from the team I used to manage, which was agile core team. Product managers, designers, and developers all, all knew what they had to do. They were all like full stack members. Well, this kind of um, thing I got as a privilege that I'm not possibly getting if I were in a startup. And three months later, I will just move it to the, the middle part. Look at this. So, Product major prepares for the contents first, and then a designer joins and discuss things together. They write, they draw things together by doing real discussion. And at the time, it looks like it's working as a real time collaboration, but actually, it does not. I mean, like what if if one person uh, finishes working something, and then um, the other person can see after uh, the the person finishes the work. Um, right now, if you look at uh, our tool, uh, it works as a real-time collaboration, but at the time, the, the performance was horrible. And this video technology we uh, created with our WebRTC, um, actually, it was, the sound was breaking all the time, and, uh, but, but seemed, seemed working as an MVP at the time. Um, making this took um, another three months, so in total, six months. And then I had another report to the CEO. So every stage I had to report to CEO. Then finally we went to the productization phase. We plan to do uh, within six months. First, we wanted to move fast. Uh, we did not want to waste much money for the production. Uh, the, the reason why we put as uh, six months uh, we wanted to go to the market as, as early as possible. And with the user's feedback, we, did, we wanted to um, grow our product uh, as well. We added several more developers uh, and finally started to care about the quality of the product before until MVP stage, uh, like I said. 
source code quality was horrible because we were only focusing on our users, user validation about the, the idea. Well, uh, from this moment, we started to see test coverage and build um, CI CD pipelines, designing several stages like development environment, stage environment, operation environment, and we built a product for the uh, next six months. While we are doing it, we met over like more product majors to validate things and to meet the uh, customer's expectation. It was extremely difficult because they already exper experienced many great tools in the market as the iteration went. Uh, we could see uh, we were slowly meeting our users' ex expectation in the market. Anyway, after six months, uh, we came up with this product called Marimba and we released to the public on September 3rd as an open beta service. Uh, the reason why we named our product with the instrument was Marimba is an wooden, wooden xylophone, which had three interesting character, characteristics. One, it can be played by one person and more than two people as a team can play this together to make better music. Three, it does not have a standard scale, meaning it can be expandable as much as possible. So if I translate to the software, Marimba can be used for one person and can be used for team collaboration and there's no limit to use this. And even if the tool was a software, we still wanted to give people a natural centered work because Marimba was an instrument made of wood. Um, and this is a use case that we came up like after six months development. So you will, um, you will see like the biggest, uh, the, the big difference in between um, MVP stage and this stage. Uh, stage. This uh, is working like a real product and still we need to go further, I think. Um, because uh, I think uh, we might need like another like months or two to meet product market fit. But this was the way how we built the product. And yeah, it can be used for like, especially for agile folks, I think. That's a really interesting story, Hubert. Yeah, thank thanks you. a lot for sharing. We have a, a couple of minutes left. So I'm okay. just going to ask people if they have any questions for you. Sure. Or things they would like you to elaborate on. If I may go, it's Fatima. Uh, so thanks for the great presentation, uh, Hubert. It's a lot Thank you. Uh, for me to learn from uh, because I'm still a Scrum Master. I'm headed towards being a product owner. And I think they were quite uh, useful insights uh, during this presentation that you started off from failure to what you guys made. So my next question is, uh, I mean, this is a bit off topic from product development at this point, but uh, are you planning to uh, expand this product uh, to um, uh, to have a knowledge base as part of the as part of the collaboration tool? So uh, people do mm. not have to have the need to have different sources for knowledge bases, but instead would have everything in on this on this um, software. Well, actually, that's that's one of the biggest like what's one of the I what that's a vision actually we'd like to yeah. Um, yeah. target. I mean, because well, if we do that, probably um, maybe we can escape from like a traditional like portal style um, website. Maybe we can put like more personalized, uh, personalized a board that can be used for like better, in more effective ways. So we'd like to reach uh, to there. And then another actually um, thing I'd like to achieve out of this work is, well, Samsung SDS is a it's a great company, but still um, a bit conservative about software development with this kind of approach. Maybe if we can make like two to three products like this and there will be like more people experiencing this and um, and then a lot of things will be proven uh, by the examples and then innovation will happen much more fast. That's, that's mm -hmm. what I'm expecting from this work. Okay. 
that's it from me. Thanks. Thank you, Fatima. Anyone else have a last comment? Do you have any remarks? Uh, you like to um, Mete, I could barely hear like what you said just before due to uh, yeah we are not able to hear her right <laughs> it's, it's just facing some network issues so, i believe she's asking for any remarks yeah um we end this uh, meetup yeah um so i mean here um i think i well is it was uh, like a storytelling um there are three things as a key takeaways that i wanted to so recap which is like innovating, uh, how innovation can happen in an enterprise company. I mean, even if it's an enterprise company, this kind of thing can happen. I might um, have as a, like a very um, unique privilege, but as soon as we get the sponsors, I think this, can, this, this kind of thing still can happen. That's one. And then product, uh, agile product development life cycle, which could be explained as a Spotify model can be done in this way and how we form the cross-functional team, how we can work like this. I think this kind of um, example can be applied to uh, many different companies as well. Um, so hopefully um, we can do more interesting things um, like this uh, in, a, in a many different places. Um, and, and this will lead to the end of the slide, which is, I really love this, this slide because this, this slide explains everything. Uh, about agile. If you're not better next month, you're no longer agile. As long as people like including you guys um, do continuous improvement, um, I think, you know, like the software industry and then like the world be will become better. And so thank you so much for taking time with me to participate in this great meetup. And let's be connected from now. Um, maybe you can talk about like more like valuable things from now together. Yeah, that's pretty much about my from from my side. Thank you. Hubert. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a really good day. And we will share the slides uh, later on. And sure. maybe you can post a link to the recording if someone wants to go back and listen. That's wonderful. Definitely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, guys. You all have a good day. You. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. 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 Thank